Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Sam. And I'm Melissa. I grew up in the FLDS community. It is a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs, which I moved out of when I was 18 years old. I was raised LDS. Sam and I have been married for eight years now and have two beautiful babies. Yes, we do. Today, we're going to be covering the topic of Samuel Bateman. We've received a lot of emails from people wanting to know more about this and what is going on. There's just there's a lot of articles out there that have a lot of horrific information. So that's what we're going to be discussing. Yeah, we. I'm going to quickly summarize the overall gist of it. If you want the details, um, they're pretty awful. Even reading it ourselves, um, it just makes you sick to my stomach, honestly. Um, at one point, I just like burst out into tears. So I don't want, we don't want to share those details. Um, if you want those details, you can um, Google Samuel Bateman, FLDS. You can find all the details of exactly what happened, um, the quick version that I will share, and then we'll get into what we want to talk about, which is um, a little bit of who he was, how he rose to power, why people would follow him, and kind of the precedent that keeps happening with these FLDS men who are um, going and taking this power and using it for abuse. Mm -hmm. So the quick version is Samuel Bateman was an FLDS member. He said that he got power from Warren to become the next prophet. He's not the first man to have done this in the community, but he is one. Um, that he was then the prophet. He had a following of about 50 people. And he took on about 20 wives. And 10 of them were younger than 15 years old. Um, particularly, like, really young, even down to, I think it was 9 or 10. Um, really sickening things. Lots of horrible, horrible sexual abuse. Um, for the wives, not just with themselves, but to with other men in the community or like within his group, um, horrible things happening. So because of all the sexual abuse, he did luckily come up on the radar of law enforcement and um, they saw little fingers sticking out of a horse trailer um, as he was transporting these young girls. And so they were able to catch him and they put the girls into a group home and some of the older women um, helped them escape, eight out of the nine girls. And but they were able to find them in the state of Washington. So right. it's ongoing. He just barely was arrested in August. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot more new information coming out as far as, you know, the girls and the women that tried to um, get them out and and help them escape the custody from the police. So there's definitely going to be a lot more about the story in the future. But that is the quick summary of what's going on. Yeah. Um, going into who Samuel Bateman is, <clears throat> babe, did you know Samuel Bateman? So I saw him around the community. I didn't know him personally that well. He wasn't one of our neighbors or anything like that. It was more in meetings and church and uh, church or community functions that we would see him. Um, I didn't honestly know that much about him. Um, sounds like I didn't miss out on much. Yeah, we did. I did talk to my sister-in-law who has left the community, and she said she actually was a babysitter for mm -hmm. his wife and their children and um, said that his wife was very, very sweet and um, that Samuel always kind of gave her the creeps a little bit. Like yeah. she said he was just an odd guy. Um, he would say, she said at the time it didn't seem odd, but um, he worked with her father and they would walk past their house to get to um, where they'd have lunch every day. And she said every time he would pass, he would say things like, okay, girls, make sure you're listening to the prophet. Okay, girls, you know, follow and listen to your fathers. Okay, girls, you know, like would always say things. And she said at the time they were used to as young girls being told, follow the prophet, listen to your father. Those type of things were normal. But she's like now looking back after having left, she goes, it was a little bit creepy that he always felt the need to comment to them something as he was walking by. Right. She said, so in 2019 is when... um. Samuel Bateman said that he was supposed to be the next prophet. Um, so, I mean, Warren Jeffs had been in prison for a while at that point. Um, and she said that he even tried to get her father, like, took him aside and tried to convince him to follow. So he was, like, taking people aside, especially the people that work together, trying to convince them to follow him. Yeah. So, I mean, this isn't the first man <laughs> no. to try to claim to be prophet. And she was telling me that. She's like... My father has had so many men like at this point, there's already been like, I think at least two others that really took advantage of a lot of people in the community. Um, and she was just sharing some insight. She said, I think 
that the people out there are so used to having someone tell them everything to do that they're really looking for a leader. Because people will look at this and be like, okay, well, thank goodness he only got 50 people to follow him, right? Um, But how do you get anybody to follow you? But before Warren was put away, you have to remember that these people were told what they were allowed to do down to how they put on their clothes. And luckily, Sam had left before this, but his sis- our sister-in-law, um, she was still there. And she was like, we were told what order to put on our clothes. They couldn't have uh, milk for a while. They couldn't have onions. I mean, down to specific foods. People are looking for a leader because they went from having every single aspect of their lives controlled to having no leadership or even the things that Warren Jeffs was trying to say from prison, he can't enforce the way that he did before, right? And so they're starting to have to make choices for themselves and they've never had to do that before. Right. What do you think? It's easy for, especially the women in the FLDS community to fall into this type of trap, uh, the Samuel Bateman trap, I guess you could say, because if if he stands up, well, first of all, he it sounded like he was fairly respected in the, in the community. So some people respected him at least. And so they trust trusted that what he would say was true. And it sounds like he kind of worked his way into people's lives in a certain way, saying things like Melissa mentioned about keeping sweet and, and doing the right things. And so it made it sound like he was trying to follow Warren Jeffs and do everything he was supposed to do. So then when he comes and says, I received revelation or uh, Warren Jeff specifically told me that I'm now the leader and that mm-hmm. he gave me that power uh, that people would definitely fall for that I can see that happening and it's it's very unfortunate because from the very beginning even before he did this he was taking advantage of young people um, and, and just even his own family he uh, even his own oh my gosh I have a hard time even talking about this but um, he even tried to get his own daughter yeah. And his, his first, so he only had one wife and the, my sister-in-law was telling me that it came to the point where he went to his wife one day, completely out of the blue, apparently, um, completely out of the blue went and said that I, um, received spiritual confirmation that I am supposed to take our 12 year old daughter as a wife. And thank goodness, thank goodness, his wife said no way and left. So, my sister-in-law said that he had a bunch of boys. This was his only daughter, too. A bunch of boys and his full-blooded. Yes, this um, wasn't adopted. Or, it's not it, adopted, no. not a, a stepdaughter. Um, I mean, all abuse is horrible. You hear a lot of times where if stepdaughters, then they're even more prone to having abuse happen to them. This was a full-blooded, his only daughter, and she was 12 years old. And he went to the wife and said that. And thank goodness she ran. She said, no way. You're not getting near my daughter and took all of her kids and left. Yeah. Thank goodness. I wish at that I wish at that point he had been arrested <laughs> and yeah. saved a lot of people from a lot of pain that came thereafter. But but very yeah. proud that she could do that. Very that proud she, of his wife. Yes. Very proud. His wife. Yeah, yeah, that she was able to do that. And um, speaking of just like women and leaving in general, we do want to remind everyone of our Christmas fundraiser <laughs> that we're doing right now for holding out help. It's an organization that um, when women do leave, they can get the resources, the help that they need um, to be able to to be able to thrive outside of that community. Um, they're saying is to go from isolation to independence. So yeah. especially women in particular, if they leave these situations, they can reach out to holding out help and um, be able to get the resources they need to become independent. Yeah, it's a great organization. We actually have a video coming out with uh, with Amanda, from, or sorry, with Emma from that organization talking a little bit more about what it is they do. So stay tuned for that video coming out very soon. Yeah, but luckily his wife left. Um, and then that's, uh, it was kind of, that was the beginning of him going and trying to um, get other people to follow him, which they did end up doing that. Yeah. Um, I'd also heard she was sharing that he was just like, there There are these other men that have, have either asked for a lot of tithing money and then disappeared with it or claimed that they were prophets and had other things happen. Um, he's obviously getting tithing money um, that was helping fund things. She even said that he was like having families like move from Southern Utah and was told like sell everything and move to this other state. And then they would, and then he would change their his mind and say, now move back. 
So just a lot of control tactics, a lot of the same things that Warren Jess yep. was doing. It's so it's so frustrating to see that what Warren did then set this precedent that uh, that gave other men the idea that, oh, he got away with this. Let's see what I can do. Let's see how far I can push the limits. And and then claiming that it's thanks to the power from of Warren that they're being allowed to do this and people falling into this trap. Oh, my goodness. I just... It's I heartbreaking. I just really hope that it doesn't uh, continue with other men in the future as well. Yeah. But. I think it's so interesting. One, uh, my sister and I, uh, sister-in-law and I were talking about the fact that it goes so much against like the principles that they're taught, like within the doctrine of, oh, yes. of their church, right? So it's all about families. It's all about, um, she was even saying it's, it's so hard to see these women like give up their children. Like Samuel Bateman went to one house and said, I'm supposed to marry four of your daughters and just took them with him. Right. Um, and she's like, these women, it's their, their kids are their entire lives. That's what they're told is like their only purpose in this life is to have children. Mm. But at the end of the day, even though every instinct in a mother is to protect their children, if they believe fully enough that that person's a prophet of God and speaks for God and that that's how it's supposed to be, then they're going to like ignore that motherly intuition. And then at some point, there's going to be that line that's like too far. Right. And I feel like that's how Samuel Bateman's wife was, right? Like you can't have our daughter that is too far and put it like stopped. But trying to get to that point, every woman's going to have a different journey. And when that line is enough, Right. Well, well, and you have to remember, too, that these women were trained from birth to listen and obey and keep sweet and do what they're told. So when a man comes and, and, and says, this is the way it's supposed to be, this is the revelation that I received and that type of thing, it's easier for them to fall into that trap of, of well, if that's what he says, you know, and he's the key holder, okay, that's what we should do then. And to the point of even... Like, it's hard to understand for someone that's never been a part of it. Uh, but for speaking from my own experience, before I moved out and looked from the outside in and realized some of the crazy things that were going on, it seemed so normal. And it seemed that we were just doing what God wanted us to do. It's yeah. hard It's hard to understand it unless you've been in it. I, I'll, that's all I can say. Yeah, but it did give me hope. Like, hearing about his first wife gives you hope that there is a line and it may take women longer to get to it. Or depending on if like her husband followed Samuel Bateman, you know, a lot of women are trapped literally because like at physically, not just emotionally, but like physically trapped. Um, if their husband's going to follow, then they have to go along with that because they don't have any way to be able to survive or in their minds, like any way to survive or know that there are resources out there to help them leave. Right. right. So there's so many other reasons, but it did give me hope that like these women hopefully are continuing to be able to have lines that they they can draw a line in the sand and everybody's journey might be different in getting their to their line in the sand but it is possible it is hopeful and one of the only things that we can do to help because sam and i sometimes sit here and we're just like oh my gosh like what can we do to help like mm -hmm. there's it feels like there's nothing right when it comes to people's religious beliefs it feels like there's nothing it's that can tough. be done to help but I would say the one thing we can do is let people know that there's resources out there. If anybody out there is in a situation, if you're from a polygamous group, there's holding out help, there's tons of other resources, please reach out to us. We can help you find the right resources to be able to get out of bad situations. And I think that's one of the main things that we can do is to let the people around us know that there's options for help and there is hope afterwards. Yeah, exactly. No, it's it's true. And and I don't think anyone should try to do it alone either. If someone has recently moved away from a community like the FLDS or other, other groups that are similar to it, uh, don't try to do it alone. I learned that very quickly in the hard way that uh, you, you need support, you need help, you need loved ones to to be around and some some of these organizations out there like holding out help will get you in connection with some of these people that can help support you in your journey yeah so and of course we would love to do that too so that's what we're here for absolutely i'm sure there's going to be more that comes out about samuel bateman as far as what's going to happen to him 
Um, and we'll try to cover that as it comes. Again, we don't want to share the the awful details. You can read that. You can read that. But as far as just keeping you aware, especially particularly for what happens with the girls and the women, um, we've had Mike King on our show before. Mm-hmm. And he helped a lot of young girls that were um, sexually assaulted and abused by another leader from the Zion Cult Society. And he got to be reunited on the Dr. Phil show with um, those girls. <clears throat> and to see that they could grow up and be able to have like happy lives after with the proper support and the proper therapy and the proper things um, just gives hope that these girls luckily are out of the situation now and that there is hope and there is like a bright future for them if they get yes. the help that they need. Exactly. And that's about all the information that we have uh, for, now. for now. So uh, the good news is, is the, I mean, everybody's all over the case. The FBI, the <laughs> you name it. The, they 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 have him, and they're. Uh, I guess we'll 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 try to see what happens and keep you all posted. Yep, and we'll talk to y'all soon. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>